Hidden Figures is one of my favorite films of the year. Um, earlier today at the PGA Breakfast, one of the things they were talking about was the fact that this was a, a, a script that talent just flipped over. So tell me a little bit about what it was like going out to talent and the reactions you got when you brought it out there. Uh, it was like, strangely, one of those easy processes. Like, like <laughs> e either the process is like painfully hard mm -hmm. or very easy. And I think everyone just, you know, Tarachi P. Henson and Octavia Spencer and Janelle Monet were, were very fast to want to wanna, to wanna do the project. And I think they, they felt the power of it mm -hmm. and they wanted to, you know, tell these women's stories so, so desperately to bring them to the light. And I think they just felt a sense of... Uh, responsibility to be honest with you mm -hmm. and the same thing with um, with Kevin Costner Kevin read the script and said I, I just want to be a part of the story telling the story Jim Parsons was the same way Kirsten Dunst was the same way uh, Kimberly Quinn everyone came like for the right reasons and very fast yeah. and for you you know when you first uh, at what stage did you come in at what stage of development of the project uh, I came in in August of 15 uh, after the first draft of the script was done by Alison Schroeder and and we started uh, right away. I mean, we, I started I started writing my version of it right away, um, basically on Labor Day. And then by December, we had a draft. And then by January, we were in pre-production. And a lot of people shy away from telling stories that are centered around STEM topics because they're like, oh, no, that's going to scare people. They're going to think it's too complicated. As you were approaching the storytelling, what were your thoughts about how to make it accessible? Uh, yeah, math is not cinematic. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. Those shots of the chalkboards and the way she's up on there, it's pretty amazing. In general, it's not cinematic, <laughs> yeah. so you got to find a way to make it cinematic and I think the way that I, I think the reason the film is working as it's working mm -hmm. is because you're invested so deeply in their personal lives and who they are as human beings uh, and therefore you want them to succeed and so it's it's kind of the math is a lighter aspect mm -hmm. of the filmmaking process uh, and then you shoot the math kind of like you know kind of like you would an action movie or you know with lots of movement and lots of lots of tension and lots of quick cuts and that's kind of how we approach it. So a friend of mine um, is involved with NCWIT, the National Council of Women in Technology, and a couple of other orgs, and they had a huge screening for a bunch of girls recently of hidden figures. Ooh. And they got these letters afterwards saying that they had never seen examples for them on screen. When you hear that kind of reaction, how does that make you feel? I mean, that's, that's worth, that, that's the whole reason you, 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 you get into this business is to try to have some kind of impact on people, mm -hmm. uh, to tell stories with a moral, with a message that, that have meaning and value. Um, I've gotten hundreds of those emails and I've gotten hundreds of posts of, of people returning to college and, and people um, buying out theaters and, and just everything you can imagine. Teachers taking whole, school, whole schools. There was a little girl in Atlanta that, that wanted to take her class and, and she needed $1,500 to take her class and she raised $13,000 and took the whole school. I mean, that, that it's been the biggest blessing and the biggest joy of our lives to like have impact on little girls of all shapes, sizes, and colors, and little boys of all shapes, sizes, and colors to teach them mm -hmm. that there is another path out there, mm -hmm. that math is cool, that science is cool, that there's another whole career you don't even know about. So it's been, it's been awesome. I'm actually part of a collective of actresses that's focused on telling science-infused stories. And what do you think is um, key in reaching larger audiences when you're doing that? I think the key to reaching large audiences is always give them a movie that's entertaining. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jack Warner, the former founder of Warner Brothers, said that a movie has to entertain, enlighten, and educate. All three E's. And lately, all we do is entertain. <laughs> but you got to educate and you got to enlighten. And, and if you make a movie that, that is entertaining, that has you know, educational aspects in it, they'll, they'll go watch it. Mm -hmm. I mean, my, my wife and I were just talking about, you remember that old... Uh, Back to school thing uh, uh, about the bill becoming a, a mm -hmm. law. You know yeah. that I'm sitting here on Capitol Hill. Mm -hmm. I'm only a bill. I just I just actually put a thing on Facebook about the fact that I feel like Hamilton is that for this kid's generation. Yeah, and how great is that little piece? And you look at that little piece and you go like that. That's how we grew up. We grew up. You learned about the political system and the legal system and the law law system by a, a cartoon. And so I, I think we should do more of that. I don't even know if I answered your question. <laughs> That's okay. I like what you said and I agree with it. So I'm down with that. Um, for you, in the process, what's your favorite part of it? Is that is it when you get that script and you're like, oh, is it the first day on set? Is it that first screening? What really juices you up? Uh, I think, I think the, I don't know. It's, 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 I don't know. I think it's probably um, the editorial process. Mm -hmm. The editorial process is such like a, 
uh, almost feels like a vacation, even though it's not. But you work so hard in pre-production, and you and you you go you go nuts in production, and you're working 18-hour days, and then you get to that editing room, and you get to just actually sit back and and and, uh, and breathe in the movie, and really kind of understand and try to figure out what it actually is and it is going to be. And that's I, I think that process is great. Was there, I'm curious about that, was there something about Hidden Figures that became clear to you in the editing room that was a surprise that you didn't expect? Uh, what became clearest to me in the, in the editing room was that, that the space rays had to be intertwined mm -hmm. with our footage in a way that we didn't realize we could do. And so that's when we started to go with stock footage or archival footage mm -hmm. mixed with CG, mixed with stuff we shot. And we, found a, we, finally, we finally found that big idea which was a transitional element for the film, which to me, you know, the rest of the film is classically cut, and that's not. Right. Yeah. And so along those lines, um, you know, you're obviously dealing with real, telling real people's stories, but of course you take creative license because, because you do. Yeah. Um, so when you're going through that process for other producers who might be dealing with historical material, what advice would you pass along about how to kind of pick and choose and put things together? Uh, it, the movie comes first, mm -hmm. so you have to, you, you're not make, we're not making documentaries, we're making narrative films, so the movie always has to come first. However, you, you must, you can't get all the facts, mm -hmm. and you can't get all the events exactly as they were. It's impossible, most of, them, most of them, or a lot of them are not dramatic, and not interesting to watch for two hours. So I think what you have to capture mostly is the essence mm -hmm. of every character, and who they were, their essence, mm -hmm. their spirit, and if you do that, the audience goes along with the ride. And tell me a little bit about casting, because you have three incredible women here leading this, leading this film. What was the essence of each one that made you say she's the right one for? Uh, I've, been, I've been in love with Taraji P. Henson's work since The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I, she just blew me away on, in that movie. And, uh, and then, you know, her work on Empire, and I thought, well, if she, can, <laughs> if she can do that and play Cookie on Empire, she could basically do anything. And I've had a relationship with her for a couple of years. I, I called her right away and she said, I just pitched her over the phone what it was. And she said yes over the phone. There wasn't even a director attached there, right? No, there was nothing attached. I just pitched her over the phone. Uh, there was no script yet that mm -hmm. she could read. And she said yes over the phone. I mean, Octavia Spencer, uh, to me, is like, uh, it's, come on, it's Octavia Spencer. Uh, one of the greatest actors of our generation, of any generation, if you ask me. And and she was the same way. She said, you know, read the script and said, I have to be on this, this the right side of history and retelling the story. Janelle Monet was a different, different, different thought because we had Taraji and Octavia, and then the studio said, "Okay, you're good. You can go play and try to find, ah. try to find. Uh, it could be a lesser-known Mary. You know, we don't, we don't have the pressure anymore of of that, of the financial pressure of getting a movie financed. And so we auditioned everyone, and Janelle Monet walks in, in our little production office in Atlanta, and did this audition, and we were just, we were floored. I mean, she had such fire and vim and vigor she was unbelievable and so you know she she embodied like i said earlier she embodied the spirit mm -hmm. of mary jackson i have to tell you that scene in the courtroom just it sticks with me and it inspires me and it makes me want to try new things so thank you for making this film thank you thank you for having me